All right, greetings to you, friends and neighbors, and greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is Brother Ricky Duck, and we're bringing to you the Duck World Trending News on this date of April 27th of 2023. And uh, this is news with a biblical twist. Also, we are from the Church of Jesus Christ location, 801 Ashton Street, here in Hickman, Kentucky. And uh, service schedules at 2 p.m. every Sabbath day. Come out and give us a visit. All right, this time, let us go right into our news headline that we're going to give the biblical twist to. Praise God. So let's swing it over here. And um, as you can see here, we have uh, Biden and the grid. That is in the news for this week. And uh, as it says in the headlines there, Biden administration preparing a major crackdown on power plants that fuel nation's grid. Now, in the United States, there's 3,393 power plants, and uh, they're fueled with coal and natural gas, and they're fired plants with those sources, that is the coal, and the natural gas. That covers 60% of the United States' electricity needs. And uh, so we say, what's that going to do when Biden pushes this major crackdown? What's it going to do? Well, when they start putting these regulations in a heavy toll on these power plants, who's going to pay the price? It's going to be we the people. Our electricity bills, again, are going to go up. This is not an accidental thing. This is tied to the uh, Green Deal, uh, Green Agenda. This is tied to the climatic cha climate change. And uh, so all of this basically is an attack by the New World Order on the United States. Other countries are not basically obliged, like China, maybe Russia, not obliged to abide by these things. And uh, so the New World Order, as uh, you will see when this uh, streamcast is over with here, you will see the agenda of the New World Order and its players and what their intentions are toward the United States of America. And it's also biblically uh, laid out that these things must happen before the coming of the Antichrist, or called the evil one. Now, uh, as I say, it will increase the cost, but right now we want to look to a scripture text since this is uh, going to be orientated biblically. So let's look at one of the main scriptures that we need to look at here. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Now, the original text mentions only he who now hinders will hinder until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Now, I know in general uh, terms of religion, they say, well, that's the church. You know, that's, that, that leans a uh, tendency toward that rapture theory. But actually, Revelation 12 mentions about a place in the wilderness where his people will be sustained and taken care of during those times. So there's no rapture in that sense of the word. And uh, it's not the Holy Ghost leaving, because if that were the case, and folks after a rapture couldn't be saved, there would be no Holy Ghost to save them. So you got to be born of spirit, and spirit left, and there wouldn't be no chance for that. So what this is implying, it's near the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Something is hindering the move of the Antichrist coming on the scene. Now, the Antichrist is going to take over the New World Order. I mean, that's obvious by Scripture. It's called a man of sin called the beast, and uh, the beast system itself is a governmental system. 
It's going to dominate the world and have power over all nations, kindreds, and tongues. This man of sin is going to be worse than Hitler ever thought about being. And uh, when the time comes, he will take his place and his position. But first, but first, there's something hindering, there's something in the way, and that something has got to be removed. Now, the New World Order is planning on a reset, world reset, where you don't use money, you don't use dollar bills, you don't use coin money, you don't use credit cards. And when they in instituted the 5G tire setup, and when everybody took the you-know-what, inside of that were the nanoparticle, or nano robots, and uh, on my... Um, on our church website, we have those different doctors that are just as important as the doctors that a lot of people listen to. Matter of fact, these folks are warning, don't take it, but you took it anyway. And it's because it was cut off from mainstream media, cut everything else off, so you couldn't be warned. At least that way you made, made you take it. So if we look at this thing in a factual way, we're going to see that something or, or something's got to be removed before Antichrist can come, before the mark of the beast. Now, there is what they're calling certified mark that will be given later at the World Economic Reset. So uh, they're working toward that goal. Everything they do is working toward that goal. Now, uh, let's move it on to... All right, well, uh, let's, let's, let's look at this thing a minute. We, we have President Biden. They worked their way around Trump. They stated they would. They did. They have a man put in the government now that's opened the borders. Since those open borders, it's not for the benefit of hardship people from Mexico, Nicaragua, or Colombia, or whoever is, Venezuela. It's not for them. Those borders were opened with the intent that overseas, since uh, we know George Soros backed BLM to ride in the streets, to burn down buildings and businesses, that man has also is influencing financially overseas and through those open borders, our enemies are flooding in as they have been trained of what they individually are to do. And maybe at a coordinated time to attack the United States. Now, we are under attack by the New World Order. And, uh, excuse me, we are under attack of the New World Order. Their goal is to bring down the power of the United States. Now, since that open border policy of the Democratic Party, we have had factory explosions, uh, processing plants that process our foods, train derailments. We've had shootings about every week or two. And my presumption is that the 5G tower where they have control of a push button when the uh, hydro uh, when the uh, nanorobots in the you know what that you took I can't be plain has taken effect taken over your mind that you will be controlled by them you don't know who is going to be programmed to take a gun and start shooting. The young man that killed 19 uh, students uh, a year or two ago, maybe a year ago. First one he killed was his grandmother, and they said he loved his grandmother, but something took him over. It seems like every, few, every week, every few days, there's another shooting. Something is driving these people to do that. 
And uh, so these things are taking place in the United States, and I say through the open border, that enemies of America are flooding in. And uh, so let's go ahead, and, and we are saying that George Soros, and I used to say Robert Sachs, but his name is Jeffrey, Jeffrey Sachs. They made some statements at the Davos meeting in 2020. As a matter of fact, I have a clip I'm going to play of the Davos meeting in the year 2020. Uh, and the first thing we want to look at is the George Soros' statement. And the statement that he made in that year of 2020, he said the U U.S. elections will determine the fate of the whole world. So you see how that he's thinking. Ever how America basically has got to be taken out of the way. This man is for the world economic reset. This man is for one billion people left on the planet. To do that, they've got to exterminate seven billion people. Their, their mindset is that people are suffering worldwide. In a lot of places, people are surviving on $2 a day and uh, living in horrible misery day by day. <clears throat> so they consider that one quick kill of a population so it can be managed and under control is better for the human race. So their intent is to disperse of 7 billion people and their guidelines are going to be strict once they've get, got their control. That's their plan. Now, Yahshua himself made a statement and said if the Lord didn't step in, that's during these times, no humans would survive. No humans would survive. So it's not conspiracy theory. It's the fact that events are unfolding to bring about what's called Mark of Beast, the one world government system, the Antichrist kingdom, before the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. As it just said, when that the tender is taken out of the way, then that wicked one will be revealed, and the Lord will destroy him at his coming in glory. So that happens at the end. That happens during the time of Antichrist beheading the Christians, making war with the Christians. This is that government that's working to take control. Their people are working constantly behind the scenes. You see them in the news. They push climate change. They push, push the Green Deal. They push anything that can bring down the power of the United States. <clears throat> if you check closely... You'll find China it has, is not pushed under the heavy regulations as the United States. China is gaining in power. China is in the mainstays of that new world order system. And uh, we see again here what George Soros said about the 2020 election, that it will determine the fate of the whole world. We know for sure now after that election, their man Biden is doing everything he can to tear down our freedom and the economy of the United States of America. It's bringing it down. They're working in every angle, every corner, in the military, in the movie industry, and everything is done with the term woke. They're done to belittle anything that has integrity toward God and country, and they're trying to bring the United States down. It's got to be done, even according to the scripture text that was written by Apostle Paul. Now let's go and let's look at uh, these two men here. Again, in the Davos meeting in 2020, George Soros 
and Jeffrey Sachs, as you would say during this time, of, uh, they was heavily opposing Trump's re-election. Robert Sachs pointedly makes statements against the United States heavily. He calls the United States an evil country. Why? They want that we're in the way of the new world order. And so what they're doing is to try to bring down our power, our economy. So far, Biden is doing it by the book. He's been instructed what to do. He's been paid real well of what to do. And uh, the sad thing is so many, so many in the government are in this move. And uh, so I'm going to play you that clip. I've talked about it from time to time of statements they made. And uh, so we're going to swing that clip over. It's going to be by Remnant TV uh, from a man. Let me see. His name is Michael Matt, I believe it is, editor of the uh, Remnant. And uh, I will put that in the uh, in the descriptions when this is over with. And you can go to his channel. He keeps up with a whole lot of this stuff, a lot more than even than I do. And uh, he will enlighten you to a lot of the things that's going on behind the scenes. So let's uh, play this clip at this time. And I'm going to move me, because I don't want to be on there while it's uh, going on. As, as usual, I don't want to be a hindrance. Praise God. So let's swing it over here to this man right here. Two days after Donald Trump gave that speech, the 89-year-old leftist weirdo billionaire George Soros made an emergency intervention where, at Davos once again, warning that the U.S. 2020 election will determine the, quote, fate of the whole world. Now, in the context of Davos, take a look at this one more time. This is a month after Donald Trump addressed Davos and stuck the MAGA finger in their face. Here's what Francis, the Vatican, and Jeffrey Sachs had to say in response. And it is a dangerous country right now. It will be absolutely dangerous if Trump wins re-election. Trump wins re-election. Trump wins re-election. Donald Trump is the problem, obviously, friends. Clearly, I consider the Trump administration a danger to the world. But I regard it as a purely temporary phenomenon that will disappear in 2020. Do you get it? Do you see why there's so much hate for Trump? Because with all of his faults, again, he's the capitalist. He's not the globalist. He never will be one of them, which is why he pulled the United States out of the Paris Climate Agreement. Donald Trump pulled the United States out of the World Health Organization. That's Bill Gates and company. And now he's threatening to pull the United States out of the World Trade Organization. People say, yeah, well, Donald Trump got married twice. He's a bad guy. Really? <laughs> he's right in the face of the demons on this, friends. Nobody ever said he was a saint. He's knocking the sacred cows of the United Nations down all over the world right now. The General Assembly routinely votes 185 against the United States on almost everything right now. And you remember, speaking of the United Nations, in November of 2019, again, right before COVID landed, Trump went to the UN on the floor of the General Assembly, and he declared war on globalism. Wise leaders always put the good of their own people and their own country first. The future does not belong to globalists. The future belongs to patriots. And shortly after the speech at the UN, Donald Trump delivered, what do you think happened? The coronavirus was unleashed on the world and Trump's booming US economy went on life support. Do you think that was an accident? All right, as uh, you could see there, that uh, <clears throat> George Soros and uh, Robert Sachs were heavily against the United States. And uh, they are the new world order. And they are for the world economic reset. And 
it's obvious to them the United States is in the way. Our economy, our booming economy under Trump was going to mess them up. People have got to be hurting to basically beg for a system, a new system. But as long as everything is going good and decent, then they can't swing it. And that's why George Soros and that's why Jeffrey Sachs hate the United States. That's why they're working behind the scenes. That's why we've had this problem of our sickness in the last two years that has done a lot of damage not only to the world economies of all nations, but the United States. Trump had a booming economy. And as long as it was like that, the New World Order couldn't push their agenda of that one world government system, the New World Order. Now, we know Antichrist is going to be revealed and take his seat and take his place when everything is set up. So he's got all of his demons working behind the scenes to bring this about. And right now, according to them, the United States is in the way, just like Paul said, whatever that was is in the way will be removed. And then the man of sin will be revealed. Now, we played a clip, I guess, uh, last, the one we had last uh, streamcast. George Green said they are planning on a, on a big war to destroy the United States. And uh, he said there might be 30 million people left out of 250 million Americans. Uh but that new world order is going to take place. It's already prophesied in God's word. And uh, as we see here in this scripture text right here, it says they worship the dragon, which gave power to the beast. They worship the beast saying, who is likened to the beast? Who is able to make war with him? It's called different names. It's called deep state in our modern terminologies. It's took over just about every nation of the world. We've got many of our senators, most of the Democratic Party taken completely, lock, stock, and barrel. I, I, don't, I don't think you name one that's actually pro-American. You can find what's, what we classify as rhinos in the Republican Party. That's a, a Republican. Uh, that, that he's, it's a Democrat wearing a Republican costume. And uh, he follows a lot of their agenda, but not as heavy. And uh, we know of two or three, maybe more. And they, a lot of times they will even vote in things and side in with the Democratic Party, even though that agenda is doing damage to the United States economy. But uh, again, that's the goal. That's the goal. We got to break the pride and the power of the United States, or we can't set up the new world order and the mark of the beast and bring in that Antichrist man. And it says here, now this whole system is a world system. Trump went in with the uh, attitude he gonna make war, he gonna empty that swamp in the United States. That, that's bigger than just a swamp here. As you can see, when that Davos meeting overseas, and even as uh, Jeffrey Sachs said 118 votes go against what America votes for now in the United Nations. United States, what, what America should do, but we've got so many enemies over here now in our government, they won't do it. We should kick the United Nations out, make them set up their shop somewhere else in some other country, stop giving a penny to it, and take care of the United States of America because America could do it without the world. But we, we're trying to tie everything into that world economy. That's why they want it so they can have the control. Who's likely to the beast? Who's able to make war with him? I know it was reported, and I, I presume it was probably right because that system been going for a while. It was stated that Robert Kennedy said that uh, before he left his noble office, he was going to expose, he said, a plan to enslave every American. And uh, it wasn't long he was assassinated. President Trump has went in with the intent to 
change things, which he done a pretty doggone good job of it for a while. He had the economy, the best it's been since who knows when. And yet, it's like uh, this guy here. You know, when Satan's behind it, he can sway people one way or the other. Now, whether he swayed the masses in the election or whether there was real bad stuff going on, you know, I, I, in my own personal feelings, say there was bad things happening. But uh, who is like the beast? Who can make war against the beast? Well, that's, that was asking a question in a biblical term that nobody is going to withstand him. Because, first of all, there was a dragon that gave power to the beast. And uh, that dragon is no more than what it classified in Scripture text as Satan. That's his kingdom. That's his way of dominating the world one last time before Christ comes destroying him. He is going to set up that governmental system worldwide that he dominates, and it's going to be a man that he's going to completely, uh, I would say, possess or dominate. And the Bible says in Daniel and Revelation they're going to make war with the saints. His goal is to make war with all Christians and try to stomp out the Christianity completely. Anything called Christianity, he's going after. It don't matter whether you got truth, whether you got half truth, or whatever, you just wearing the name. In that sense of the term, the beast system don't care whether you're Catholic, Protestant, Pentecostal, or whether you keep Torah, none of that. He's going after anything. And uh, his goal is to try to destroy anything connected to God because when Christ comes, he's going to establish his kingdom with power to rule the nations with a rod of iron. That will happen, but it still don't mean Satan ain't going to try to stop it. He's going to behead a lot of people. A lot of Christians are going to be put to death. Yahshua himself said, that if you pray, you'd be kind of worthy to escape. Now, the church took that mean we're going to be raptured out. No. You go back to a place prepared in the wilderness. The Lord gave me that vision in them. I'm going to say the 70s, uh, unless I messed up the, the, the year. It might have been 70s, maybe 80s. That there are blessed areas, and I wouldn't want to come up with that, by the way, in case you think I'm saying that, because there's another minister that said that, and then the things the Lord showed me tied into it. Every country in the world is going to have a what's called blessed area. It's, it's typical like the land of Goshen that was in Egypt during the time of the plagues. If you read back in, in the book of Genesis, you will find that when those plagues were going on, that as long as they was in Goshen, it couldn't pass the border. As long as Israel stayed within that border, the plagues did not touch them. No, no hailstones, none of that. There's blessed areas that God's going to protect his people from the Antichrist kingdom. Because listen, he's going to have the highest technology to hunt you down, track you down, and try to annihilate you. It's going to take the miracle power of our God, of Yahweh, to sustain his people that's keeping the commandments of God. But he'll do it. He'll do it. And in those blessed areas, they won't be able to touch you no more than they could come after Elijah in his day. As long as he was where God told him to be, that was willing. Like I said, the Lord showed me a night vision back when I first received the Holy Ghost. An angel put his hand on my shoulder and didn't say a word, just had a smile. Beckoned with one arm into the wilderness. When I looked through the wilderness, there was a clear crystal stream of water with my Bible floating on it. When I picked it up, the vision ended. About three days later, he gave me the revelation of that. We're going to be preserved in the wilderness, just like Revelation 12 describes, a place prepared of God in the wilderness. And so Christians have got to come to knowledge of that. Most local churches don't have a prophet anyway, so they're not going to, it's going to be Greek to them. But God's people that are keeping the commandments, God's going to lead them to those places that there's, I know this minister, uh, Brother Terrell, said the Lord told him there's 200 in the United States alone, not counting the rest of the world. And uh, 
the Lord showed me forward Missouri. That's what he was in reference to when he gave me that night vision. When a pair of hands replaced the uh, state of the United, I mean the country of the United States. When I want, I prayed about being evangelist. And then he showed me those four dots on the mouth of Missouri. And then he audible voice spoke and said, choose one. And it took a few years, but God get, brought me into understanding where that location is. And uh, God's going to have his people in each location. I've had others to email me from west of Missouri and said, they're in one of the blessed areas. So they're aware of it. And uh, so everywhere God's people are, God's going to deal with his people about where they're located. Those that are keeping the commandments faithfully, those that are not eating unclean, those that are not breaking the Sabbath like Rome has pushed on everybody, those that are not honoring the pagan holidays like Rome has pushed on everybody, the whore of Revelation, her daughters, go for that stuff, but God's people are coming out from that stuff. And if you're all head over heels into that, you may not be his because his people are coming out. His people will have ears to hear. Now, it's true. Trump, Trump done his best. He, he gave a shot at it. My speculation is if he were to get reelected again, which he may or may not, he wouldn't put it past them this time of trying to assassinate him. And, uh, because they're wicked enough to do that. So, uh, anyway, I hope that you have uh, got something out of this today. As I say, this is something new we started here. It's uh, Dirt World Trending News, and it's news with a biblical twist. And uh, we will use news articles from time to time. Then we will bring in the scripture text in reference to those events, sins, crimes, whatever. And uh, so, I don't know how often we'll do these things, but we will give the scripture text in recognition of these things as well. Anyway, I hope you've got something out of today. So we're going to say, may the Lord God of Israel bless you, keep you, and sanctify you in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. Amen. God bless. Till the next time.